and welcome everyone to a new episode of New Earth Nation Primetime Radio. We are joined by my intrepid co-host, Cosmos, Bear Soren of the Wisdom Academy, and Billy DTK, a senior Maori elder. Bear Soren, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Andrew. Um, it's great to be on the show again with you. It's, uh, I think, my fourth time already. Yeah, you, um, and, me, you and Cosmos have had some amazing shows. And Cosmos, hey, you're in the background. Say hi, how are you doing? I'm good. Excited. Yeah, we're for sure going to have a great show tonight. Uh, for um, um, listeners who have followed the, the last uh, shows, uh, the uh, Earth Academy or Academy of Wisdom Keeping in the New Earth Nation um, is um, set up to gather wisdom keepers, um, storytellers, uh, shamans uh, from all over the world to share their wisdom um, with uh, the people who are ready to listen, people who want to listen, uh, people in the Western world. And uh, we're very proud tonight to have uh, Billy TK Sr. on the show. Uh, he is a, a Maori elder, a peacekeeper, a member of uh, Maori Parliament, um, a musician. He has been traveled, has been traveling a lot uh, uh, the last years. He came to Europe. Uh, he's been to India, all over the world. And uh, yeah, we're very happy to have him on the show. And uh, we hope uh, to hear uh, Billy talking later on about uh, peace, about uh, Vaitaha, about uh, Lemuria, about uh, New Zealand, his tribe, and uh, especially about uh, the message he has to share. So, Billy, welcome to the show. You are joined by Bear Sorn and, and Cosmos. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, greetings to you all. How wonderful it is to be on your show and to be together with you in the, in this moment, sharing this. And uh, it's taken us a while to get all the technology working, but uh, you know, second time, we're all go. We're all good to go. So, what what do you have to tell us today? You, I understand that you you are uh, an elder. What what did it take to become an elder? <laughs> An elder, uh, just, <laughs> it grows on you with age, I suppose. <laughs> but, um, well, uh, it, it's it's something that uh, uh, I guess that we um, that we grow grow older into, and with our with our tribes, and uh, and they just accept you as as an elder. And uh, that's no where you learn to learn to be the peacekeeper, and and all the stuff that Bear was talking about. Yeah, well, uh, I've always had a, a feeling for peace, even even when I was really young, you know, and um, and it's so wonderful to have um, practiced peace over the last, you know, 40, 50 years, and uh, and now I can share that experience and that wisdom with you guys and and all over. And that's that's the exciting part because it's such an exciting time we're in. You know, it is the, it is this time of, of consciousness change and enlightenment, and there's so many people that are waking up now. So, what what do you have to tell the people that are, are freshly waking up that are that are new to what's going on in our world? Yes, well, that's this is the time, you know, like this is this is the the golden age we're in, or the age of Aquarius, and uh, all the indigenous nations know about this time, you know, because it's been coming through there. Their, their 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 prophecies and through their um, through their uh, shaman and all have been speaking about this time that we've come into and really it's it's about we've come into a, a threshold of consciousness uh, where the um, where the old give way to the new and we've been locked into a sort of a paradigm of darkness for ages and ages and ages and ages and now the the threshold is broken. We, we we've come over to the top, and we're we're coming down on the other side now, which is, you know, which is the age of light, more light, more peace, more sharing, more love. You know, is, and that's what we've wanted for ages. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that has come about 
for a number of reasons. It's come about because <coughs> one, the special time of, of, of the cosmic lineup and um, the way that the, the position of the of everything is, it's released a whole lot of energy. And this is the time that the, all the prophets and prophecies have come through that this is this is the most important time in the history of this planet. And and uh, and because of the increase uh, of the energy that's coming in from the cosmos through the um, through the, an energy called the the photon energy, which is like a, a vivifi viv vivified energy of um, light particles. And it's 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 a huge huge body of, of energy that that that's comes into our galaxy, and not only into our galaxy but into a lot of galaxies. So this this photon energy is affecting a whole you know right through the the cosmos. And with us like with us on this little ball in space, it's affecting our all our uh, positive and negative. Uh, Energy with you know all all our electrical systems. It's affecting the Earth Mother. She's been preparing for this for a long time already, and uh, and and especially her magnetic belt. Um, uh, scientists tell us that the magnetic belt is, is is really at its weakest point now, and she's preparing for the new for the new shift. I think she's had enough of 3D. <laughs> Time to shift on, try to move. How, and how, um, how is she working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, know this is enough. You know, I had enough. Of this. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay. And her ley lines, all the energy lines, you know, are, are opening to draw in the energy, and it's affecting all our uh, electrical system too within our bodies. You know, within our nervous system, all our auric system, and all our systems are all being touched. By by this energy that's come in, and 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 that's what the people across the planet are feeling, an increase of frequency. We're going into, we're stepping up into a high, high frequency, which is what we've been waiting for a long, long, long time, is to get back, you know, to being a, a light being. You know, that's that's what we are, a light. Some being. people, some people you know, call it awakening from the dream. Yeah, it is, you know, and that's that's part of my. I, I guess you could call I'm I'm the poker, I'm the I'm the prodder, I prod. Wakey, you wakey, you know. <laughs> wake up! <laughs> Time yeah, to put on the makeup. Wake up, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 because you know, it's an incredible thing that we're waking up into. You know, we're waking up from like a, you know, from a, from being asleep to to like this huge, humongous like consciousness that we are. I think it's what really a, important to, incredible time. I, I think it's Sorry? really important I think it's important to understand that as we're waking up to this light that is infusing and and ramping up our frequency, we become aware of where we've turned away from the light and where that darkness has resided in our lives and within us. And now we have a resource that we didn't have before to address that. So with you're seeing the darkness, it's not a bad thing. That's an excellent thing because now you have resources to address it. That's right. You're so right, and uh, you can only appreciate the light, if, you know, by by experiencing the darkness. You know, mm -hmm. by going well. You know, I, I don't want to go there again. You know, maybe maybe I like it like it a bit more over on this side. Yeah. Exactly. And, <laughs> yeah. And that's how it works, you know. Life works like that, you know. You can only experience and know something if you experience its opposite. That yeah. is so true, and that's where this, where where I ask a lot of people, what's paranormal? What's paranormal to you, Billy TK? Well, I know that I'm 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 open to to experiencing myself. More and more and more and more, as this light being, and I'm understanding that within inside of me, there is a vastness. You know, there is a world. There is a whole other part of myself that I'm exploring, 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 exploring. And then 
I get, I get to feel that there's a part of me that's infinite. Okay. You know, that there's I'm part of an eternal, infinite power. You're part of the spirit. collective of, yes. of sharing source here on Earth. Yeah. yeah. And what that brings for me, it brings a whole different way of looking at myself and everything around me. Mm -hmm. I start uh, to see that everything around me is all connected. We are, you know, like we're all one. The people especially. You know, exactly. you know when when I see like people, um, to me now the 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 I feel just a love for them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which I didn't used to before. I didn't feel that sort of really loving and a connection, but now I can I, I feel it in myself and I can feel it in them too. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking more and more at people as as spiritual beings as part of me. Whereas, you know, uh, in my everyday or e uh, ego conscious, I'm they're just people, you know. But it's deeper than that, you know. We're 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 part of each other, mm -hmm. and that's the thing that's coming home. And uh, and what you're asking, I'm, uh, you know, I'm waking up to more and more and more of my foreverness, if you like, mm -hmm. my foreverness. Yeah. And that's such an exciting, exciting, uh, exciting time because, um, you know, we've been locked into low consciousness for such a long time. Humanity's been locked in there, and now we're starting to make the turn and starting to embrace, you know, the higher aspect of ourselves, such as sovereignty. And when we start to see that, the, 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 yeah. When we start to see that the higher aspect of ourselves includes us as an infinite being, I mean that opens up a huge, huge, huge doorway for us, you know, within ourselves. You and know, all the stuff that you asked, Karen. I was just going to say that you, as an elder, um, and with your music, you opened the door for people to get a glimpse of who they were more and more the shamans of the wisdom keeping institute they do the same thing andrew does the same thing as the galactic historian i do in my way we bring a frequency that helps people know who they are but what's happening now which is so exciting is people are having dreams and becoming aware through inspiration and waking up and knowing it's who they are and and it, they don't need to have someone do it. They just recognize that aspect of themselves in the other person. That's right. You're so right. And um, you know the the it goes even deeper than that. It goes to the all the religions, all the churches, all the teachers, all the all the yes. all the different masters. You know, but you are the key. You are the key because it's you. Who experiences it within yourself? Yes. Yeah. The, I mean, you know what you know. The, you know only the, you know your own story. It's yeah. uh, it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing what happens uh, uh, to, uh, to people, uh, especially in the last uh, let's say one year, one and a half year. When you were saying that the that the fre that the frequency is is, is continuously raising, uh, uh, if you see people. Um, I, I experience uh, I experience people in in sweat lodges or or when I drum for them, for example. Uh, once you once they they, they they lift up like like uh, if if I had 50 people uh, five years ago, um, almost I mean they, they they would feel something, they would get a, a, a better energy, but that was that was quite it. But now what what you experience, people start start to channel. They start to talk in ancient languages. They yes. they, they they start to channel light languages. Uh, other people in a room, one talks in light language, the other one uh, um, uh, it translates it. It's it's really amazing. And 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 that people, you know, they they didn't have any um, um, uh, spiritual uh, uh, experience before. So so. Literally everything is possible at the moment. I have been um, uh, talking to to a healer, a friend of mine from 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 India, um, um, just uh, two hours ago, and 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 we were both like getting to the same result at the moment. 
if you are if you are aware and if you are in consciousness, you literally can every, can order everything in Cosm. It really will manifest within. It, it, it's it's amazing the time I I experience it day by day. You know, every conscious thought at the moment manifests. It's it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. So that's why we we really need to go out there and, as you said, Linda, tell the people who they are light beings and what what is in them you know everything is in them it's just a little little uh, light they need to have from some outside which is light and then then they can just go and 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 uh, and fly and, and it's that ceremonial space that you offered that held space for their higher selves to come in their body yeah. to remind their body that the body is the experience and not the soul so mm. many people suffer from this this upside down inside out world yeah. where the body's been abused so long psychically physically mentally sexually and every other layer of experience that the body says i'm in charge mm. and it mm. begins to tell the soul no and the soul doesn't allow you to fully dream and when we're disconnected from our dreams we need people like bear or billy or myself or cosmos to step forward and hold space so people can begin to make their own sacred space inside mm -hmm. and also to have the confidence of speaking one voice instead of dualistically in other mm. words, being able to speak from the spirit, whatever the command is, whatever the dream is, and not speak with doubt and hope it is and try to make it. We are the law because the spirit only knows itself as we direct it. And this uh, confidence that I see building with uh, all of you offering your gifts is that all of those who are doing that in their particular way of expressing do it as a singular intention it mm. is their spirit given voice whether it's coming in as an animal spirit as a, a historical spirit as a star studded spirit from other realities it doesn't matter it's all us but to be able to find the singular voice is extremely important for creation and for expanding this frequency Mm -hmm. Billy, I have I have a question for you. In the Maui Maori traditions of creation, uh, how how does this history relate to to some of our other histories? Uh, well, we have a we have a mythological figure. Well, it's, it's we call the, we call him uh, what we call the kaitiaki, a guardian. And the guardian of, and uh, 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 oversees a lot of Maori um, people and their and their and the works and the things they do, and they call him Tani Mahuta, Tani Mahuta, and they said that um, that uh, Tani Mahuta was uh, invited up to the twelfth heaven to um, to receive what they call the three baskets of knowledge. And so he ascended to the 12, 12 heavens, up to the 12th heaven, and he was given three baskets. The first basket contained the things of the celestial realm, which is the, the birth of the stars and the suns and the planets and the cosmos and everything else and, and all that. And the second, the second basket contained the things of the terrestrial realm, the planet, the trees, the forests, the seas, the animals, and all that history that goes in and, and, and that makes up all that. The third basket contains the things of the spiritual realm, and, uh, and, 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 and that's the whole different talk and according to what I call is a whole different thing about that the Great Spirit had this union, if you like, to express itself other than a source of energy, of pure energy, that was almost formless, that was almost like um, pure energy, just that, 
like a pregnant void of great mystery? Yeah, like uh, just pure energy. And it had <coughs> contemplated of that feeling of what it was feeling. And in that contemplation, in that thought of that feeling, an awareness came through. And in that awareness was you and I and the sparks from that, that thought. It, a consciousness came. And we are, we, were, we are the manifestation, the spiritual sparks of that consciousness. And in order for us to fulfill, if you like, a given mandate by the Great Spirit, our mandate was to go forth and make known the unknown. In other words, within the source of everything, within the parent of everything, lay an un you know, like an, an unrealized infinite potential. And so when when the when the when the when the Great Spirit allowed us to come forth in its own energy, in its own self, in its own image, we are the result of we are the sparks of that image of that. And that was the that was the thing for us is to go forth and make known the unknown of the parent of the great spirit and that's we've been given those tools we've been given those that energy to be able to do that you know within ourselves how by the same process contemplate by our thought by our creativity same process and that's that's how i perceive and how we perceive down here and amongst our circles it happened That's an, an incredible creation myth. Um, so, so much of it goes back to the such a, the fundamental teachings of what consciousness is. There was a contemplation, and in that contemplation were soul, seed sparks of souls. Is that the creation of the universe or the creation of Earth? Well, when we when the when the when the sparks came to an, into existence from the from the source. They were given full, full authority to do work, whatever. There was no right, no wrong, no judgment, no nothing. Mm -hmm. And so in order for the sparks to move forward, they had to create amongst themselves a mirror consciousness, a mirror consciousness, something that could reflect back to them where they were at, what they were experiencing. And hence, it was the sparks that created the illusion, Maya. The, and you that's and the I. grand illusion of the sparks encountering this three-dimensional world, which is a shared reality, shared dream matter reality on a planet in a galaxy that's 100% free will, in a universe that's 100% free will, and the original source is holding space in this pregnant void of great it. mystery, and the great spirit lives inside great mystery, is in contemplating all creation. That's right. You see, it's through us that the great spirit steps into the creation, mm -hmm. through your thoughts, through your actions, through your words. The great yeah. spirit experiences that through you. And Without mirror consciousness, we would never have the opportunity of really knowing our thoughts. We wouldn't know what it is that we have in our minds unless we had it reflected all around us. So Indeed. once you understand that it is the divine that is giving life to what it is we are wanting to know and the mirrors that give the reflection back to us of what we're experiencing, it becomes an extraordinary journey. Beautiful. Yeah, that's it. Exactly it. You know, the mirror reflects everything. See, we are responsible, if you like, 
for every event, circumstance, everything that comes and we experience in front of us and around us. Who do you think that draws that to us? We do. Each of our experiences, this moment that we're sharing in time, this link up now, is happening on a really cosmic level because you know we're 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 sharing it together. We're creating in this moment together. And how beautiful that is because you know that we do that and it's it's the same process, you know, that we create in this moment for the next moment and the next moment. And it's all happening now. It also helps us understand that the greatest present we could ever give ourselves is a new moment. To be able to recognize what we've created and change our mind to create better, uh, to create in a way that includes and adds unto. Um, that's the gift of life. As if we have one breath left, that's still the gift of life. Yes, well, the breath, the breath is the key, you see, because the breath is the thing that brings the, the, the God force, the life force into us each moment. The breath begot the, breath. the taste of life. The taste of life yeah. makes the seed of life. The seed of life empowers the hearts of life. Through those experiences of life, we all share those common things through breath, through the giving yes. of the seed or the receiving of the seed. Whether it's the seed songs of, of of that keeps the people people fed, or it's the seed song that a, that a father sings to a mother that that's infertility. Yeah. And the wonders of creation are here now. And the wonders of these creation is we get to co-create together. You're in New Zealand, bears bear. Where are you at? Uh, in yeah. Central Europe. In Europe, both Cosmos and I and Santi are in Yelm, Washington. So we're spread <laughs> across the world, and yet we're connected here in this little space, in this little slice of time. We've come together. We are multi-dimensional coming together, just like you were saying, and so many other dimensions and time streams. Not only are we having this communication, we're communicating to ancestors thousands of years ago who are sitting next to fires contemplating what future is like for them. And we're also in the future contemplating yep. how wonderfully we've connected with our soul kin now. Yeah. Uh, what I what what I what I uh, what I what I what I see is that that going into this new going into this new cycle of the sun now Everything, as Billy said before, is running. We are lifting up the frequency, but uh, the beautiful thing is what you just said that we are connected is because we are totally. Our frequencies are totally matching. They are totally lined up. And that's why, and that's why, that's why our, our that's why we are together here on that show, and that's why we share what we share at the moment. And uh, what I what I see from young people out there, from children. You know, they're talking about uh, uh, crystal uh, children born in the last years, uh, beautiful um, uh, young uh, people with uh, beautiful abilities. I really noticed that, 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 that there is a total difference between uh, these now seven, eight, nine, ten year old children compared uh, to many children uh, uh, in, in our ages or, or before. When we were, I mean, uh, decades before, uh, because um, what I, what I, what I feel from them, they are totally running on frequency. That's um, right. They, they, they don't, they don't accept anymore that their mind is is conditioned. I mean, of course, their mind is conditioned still in a way, because they are part of of, of that system, but nevertheless, um, they are carrying an inner power, an inner shield. Uh, which is really strong compared to 20, 30 years ago, and 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 they are running totally on frequency. They are not judging anymore. Is it right or wrong? Or it's just you know, do we match with the frequency? Does it feel good? I can see it on my kids. I can see it on many other kids, and that's really a beautiful thing. And that's uh, that's uh, such a beautiful. Uh, um, 
also released that we are going, so many people were talking about that we are going into bad times and whatever, but if you see all what's coming up here, if you see what the ancestors are telling us, it's just wonderful where we are going to. And, and um, I'm, I'm so happy really, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to see, to see all the things uh, going on and, and, and it's only one generation actually. I mean, the generation which is coming behind, behind us, they are already there. They are already uh, they are already born with this frequency, and um, yeah, I wanted to um, ask uh, I, I wanted to ask Billy something. Uh, we were talking about uh, before the prophecies um, of all the indigenous people, um, Billy. Um, in 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 many of the prophecies, or in all, almost all the prophecies. He's always talked about that we are going into into a, a new cycle of the sun with lots of changes, lots of changes towards uh, the positive, towards the light. Uh, there will be the people like like uh, for example the the Kogi tribe uh, in in South America who who call who call us the little the little brothers when they say the little brothers are ready to listen now. Uh, but the prophecies say also there will be a big part of humanity who will suffer very hardly um, in these times, or who will, in a way, not make the shift. What, 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 uh, what is your, what is your uh, view on that? Okay. Before I, um, I respond to that, can I just take a two-minute break, and I'll come back and, and we'll, we'll carry on. Sure. No sure. problem. One. So we just. Mark it to yeah, so. take the time. I just put it in the chat. Santi's listening in the background. He, he, it's in the chat. Okay. There's a huge um, gold star, unusual in its shape, that is formed in this discussion. It's mm. vibrating and beautiful. I don't know exactly where it goes. Uh, maybe Andrew has something about it, but I can see it very, very clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, something got changed in our reality yesterday. Yes, it did yesterday. Big time, and I have been, I have been like searching high and low, and who, whatever they did, they're slick, and it, it, it changed. <laughs> it's a big change. I didn't, I didn't feel the shift of the change. I felt the precipice of the change yesterday. And I had to focus all day. I mean, I had to stay on my point all day. I woke right. up this morning. Like a rudder. Like, like, like like, exactly, exactly. I felt it come in about three days, three days yeah. ago, and I'm like, what are they doing? They're stirring the yeah. pot somehow. <laughs> I know. And then I'm like, wow, they I did know. something big. But today, whoa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was perfect that we delayed this, and it didn't work the last time we came together because this frequency is – has many applications and is oh, yeah. quite ex out. quite beautiful. Okay, coming back to you, okay. Billy, and the answer to Bear's question. Okay, so just give a, a just let him set his mic up, and then Bear just give him a, a blank a, a one okay. second pause, and then ask the question. Um, <clears throat> do you want to say it again, or do you want me to respond now? Uh, I can briefly say it, but we cut it out later what I say now because the question was said before. I was asking uh, your point of view on going into a high frequency, uh, going in, into a higher light uh, frequency, and uh, many people will will either not make it or will very hard suffer in that time. Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of the a lot of the different. Uh, information, if you like, and knowledge that's coming through from the other side, is that we're in moving from a third, fourth, and into a fifth dimension sort of frequency. <clears throat> and what that really means is that within inside of us, we all really have those frequencies within us within our infinite selves. So it's it's not like the whole it's not like a, a huge uh, 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 cosmic thing that 
all of a sudden it changes. But we see we're we're moving in that direction at any rate. And it's that frequency that opens the doorway for us. And we're actually moving into our own selves. You see what I mean? That that mm -hmm. as our consciousness, as our frequency gets higher, it unlocks the those sort of door doorways for us. Mm -hmm. So that uh, it, it it's like the magic key. Your your consciousness, your frequency that you're vibrating at is the key to unlocking all the different frequencies that you already have within you. Mm -hmm. You see? And moving from third, fourth, fifth dimension is already already you have that within you. We have that. And it's we're unlocking the, the door so that we can experience that more and more and more. And see, we we try and understand infinity from a very, very, you know, finite point. But infinity is exactly what it is. It's endless. Endless. There's no stopping. We're on this journey, you know, forever, <laughs> you know, and we're the creators of the journey. You know, we're on the spiral of life, spiraling and spiraling and spiraling and spiraling. And however we want to create our adventures along the way, then we do so, you know. And sitting here in third dimension, like in matter, the spiritual form, this light being, and sitting here in matter has brought all sorts of experiences to us. You know, we experience family, we experience, you know, um, poverty, we exper experience what it's like to be rich, we experience what it's like to be cold, hot, and all the things that we experience in physicality, we experience on this level. But this next step for humanity is to step up into an another frequency, step up. And, but we can only step up, you know, we by raising our own, our own vibration, our own frequency. It's our own frequency you know, like, uh, that opens those, those doorways for us. And part of the cosmic time that we're in is helping that process. So and helping the process is the, the, the teachings? Yeah, and this is the time that, you know, all, all these all these indigenous people are talking about all the, is that, you know, this is the time that we're stepping into this, this this higher frequency. You know, a lot of the shaman, really the shaman are there between this world and those other worlds and they and and, and, and they've been now sort of voices if you like. Mm -hmm. And Just the like, ceremonies that we have, you know, like the ceremonies, the fire ceremonies, um, the vision quests and all the other different ceremonies are really there to open the frequencies, to o unlock the channels for that information to come through to us. We're, but we're doing it. It's inf it's information and that we already have within inside of us, and all we're doing is going through the ceremony so that it, it opens the channels so that we can experience it coming through to you, to bear to us the information that's coming from those ceremonies. But I think it's important to um, be aware that in order to have the new frequency and the awakening to be your primary experience, you have to master um, your genetics, your culture, um, your conditioning, your programming, and your addictions. And we all have them one way or the other. And it, it is created a concept of reality in 3D um, experience. And to be able to move to fourth and fifth level where the heart is leading and unity consciousness is the overall awakening, one must choose with profound will. And I think one of the reasons why many of the great uh, elders and message givers at this time say, yes, there is the exquisite 
renaissance, the evolution of peace, and there are those that shall know great suffering because they cannot make that choice. They have not chosen to. And they have the same right everyone does. And is there an earth for them? Is there an earth for us? And do we make that step seamlessly into the new earth? Um, or is it that we are seamlessly unfolding in where we hold our consciousness? I like the way that you put it. <laughs> um, we are the key. You are the key. Whatever you can imagine can be. Whatever you think your thought is the most beautiful tool that we've been given, you know? Because what if you can think it, it's alive in consciousness. Yeah, you can you see? manifest it. And, and you can draw that forth. You can pull that thought once it's alive in consciousness because we share consciousness, you see. We, sh we are a collective consciousness and every thought is shared. Every thought that you comes into you is pulled from the collective. You know. And when you look up and it's used. Sky, and when you look up in the sky yeah. you see the weather, that's our uncollective trying to collect and come together. That's why all these different cities and states, they all have these alternating weather patterns and whatever you say about conspiracy doesn't matter. Our weather patterns are collective and uncollective coming together and any human being trying to understand unity will see it in the clouds and the skies. There's a saying that one being with powerful will and a smile on their face is greater than any army. And I think <laughs> that the power of that is if we know that the spirit, the great spirit lives within us in the original atom of contemplation, awakening choice, then we know that there is the divine within us, but we must learn humbly learn how to focus that will and how to be non-negotiable that it isn't trying and it isn't hoping and it isn't it isn't anything but the awakening of knowing that that which we give our will to and hold sincerely will manifest maybe it'll manifest out of any time that's familiar to us but if we are truly creating from that will we're in no time and it will manifest Indeed. Very well. Once you've thought it, it's alive. Yeah. Your thought is, is brought it alive. And then that thought comes into your spirit. That thought is lowered into light form and comes into your aura. Your aura is the is the is the electromagnetic part of you too and then into your brain and then the brain distributes the thought into every cell in your body that's how it works mm -hmm. and we have such an incredible machine this this body it's the most exquisite creation that you can get well I mean you know it's it, it it's the vehicle for the spirit you know to get around, and, you know, to mobilize them, you know, this, this this body, and what a wonderful, what a wonderful vehicle it is, you know, you know, it's a, it's it, it, it's so beautiful because, as you say, it houses the great spirit, and because it houses the great spirit, we can consciously have union within us, with it. Mm -hmm great light, that great power. And that, to me, that union is the kingdom of heaven. And in that union, you can communicate to any other being sharing a reality, not only in this world, but any other world you can perceive. I think Indeed. that's important, we, Andrew, the sharing part. I mean, I think that's really, really important that we come together and two or more are gathered um, and we're sharing a reality which expands it geometrically and dimensionally.
we share a relationship with the ancestors that our culture doesn't really know about today. And when the different indigenous elders and flame keepers come forward, such as Billy, Bear, and all those others that are out there, they begin to share that frequency that you have ancestors, whether you're connected to them or not. It's not the matter. It's the fact that you do. And when you begin to call upon them, their wisdom becomes a part of your awareness, which you can draw down into this 3D brain to apply to a concept that needs resolution, not justice or judgment. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I mean, See, the answer. thing is that the thing is that um, humanity already knows this stuff. Mm. They already know it. It's it's already in their in their in their being. It's 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 prodding them to remember. Right. I I say we are a race with amnesia. Yeah. Sometimes it's a good thing. <laughs> yes, um, and 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 what Billy said before, and and that's what we are what we are really running for in the Wisdom Academy is is ceremony, ceremony, ceremony. Because through ceremony, you you open you you make the people access to to these uh, to these keys, yeah, to be to to have the access to the keys, and 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 um, I'm very convinced that. You you can you can reach many 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 people uh, uh, only through ceremony. Uh, many people uh, who are uh, the people to suffer, you can reach them into ceremony. You you can you can if you if you bring them if you bring them the beautiful ceremony where where they feel that their that their that their frequency is raised and they feel the difference. Uh, I just come out of a three day sweat lodge and. We were in 50, 51 people there in the sweat lodge, and it is amazing when you saw the people on the first day when they were coming to the lodge. I mean, the first day's lodge was six more than six hours, six hours, six and a half hours. Then you see them after the first lodge. You see them after the second lodge. After the third lodge, it's it's new beings. It's not the same people anymore you saw three days before, um, and um, and you see people. I see people walking into lodges. And and people come into lodges, and they have never had any uh, experience with, with with their spirit. What's I mean, consciously with whatsoever, uh, have never been at the yoga or whatever. But but when they go into the lodge and they come out, their whole life changes. Dream? Did they go into dream time the next one, two, three nights after a lodge? And there are people coming out the lodge that quit the job after three days. They like they leave their life behind because, and and we have so beautiful ceremonies which our ancestors have led us, and we really, all we need to do is to 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 practice them and to listen to listen to our ancestors, how we how we do them. I mean, there are a lot of ceremonies which we don't know anymore how 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 they were how they were uh, done, but by connecting through through the people who can connect, by reading very carefully. Uh, um, stone. I I I saw. I always say talking to stone people, but reading also petroglyphs, but not in the scientific sense, in the in the spiritual sense, connecting with what the ancestors have drawn for us there. Yeah, we really can go back, and um, and uh, and as Billy said, everything is in us. We just need that little thing to release it, and then everything comes out. Nothing is new. Everything is there. When I, when I the, had ancestors, my... the ancestors are a fundamental key. I mean, in my life, I'm with my ancestors. I'm, I'm communicating with my ancestors since I'm four uh, uh, years old. But, uh, but that's why, that's why uh, uh, it's so important that, that to, to, to spread the word that, that getting in connection with your ancestors uh, um, and, 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 with, and, and with your spiritual helpers, uh, it's, it's, the key to, it's the key to consciousness. <clears throat> Absolutely. When I when I had my experience when I was nine years old at the baseball stadium and all that knowledge came into me, I knew that it didn't come into me. It was already inside me. It was in my my DNA. Um, I had, I literally had a, a vision of my DNA unwrapping and, and uncoding. Think of like the Russian eggs. You open a Russian egg and then there's another one and another one and another one. And that's what it was like unfolding in my crown chakra, in my brain, in my throat, my heart, all the way down into my toes. 
while the entire stadium was cheering for a baseball game that they had just won. And that's where I began to understand the fundamentals of what Billy was talking about is the contemplation of the great spirit inside the great mystery and this pregnant void of creation, how this pregnant void of creation can put a, 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 a an ambionic sack around those that are going through their own personal wisdom and upgrade, upgrades. Um, many, many elders who have entered the dream world, un entered the placenta of the void of great mystery, and it's a specific portal in which the elders understand this is where you get the nurturing from the highest source, which all the ancestors have been looking for. And when you connect to your ancestors, you have the searching times of all of them connected into you through your DNA lineage. And in that DNA lineage is all the wisdom we know we need to know how to live a natural life and how to not live an unnatural life. I agree. Mm -hmm. So Billy, I have I have a, a question for for you. Um, in as you've been seeing society grow over the years, what have you seen that's to benefit it? What have you seen that society is putting forward that's 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 not fear? Oh well, my hope for society, you know. I've watched society for a long time, and you know I've seen it go through all its uh, ugliness, and then you know I've seen it evolve to to, uh, to beautiful too. And with this coming age, I see that the promise, you know, to be able to um, just for instance, just to be able to share our food, you know, with with everybody, to be able to share our resources with everybody. What a beautiful, I mean, concept that is just to be able to share with the people on this planet so that we can provide for each other and help each other and share with each other and, and, and give to each other, you know, because it's, it's only through the giving and that we, 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 we receive, you know, and, and, you know, there's so much wealth in the on the planet, so much food on the planet, and what are people doing? You know, they're killing each other, or, or, or we have starving people. That's insane, you know, especially given the amount of resources that are here. But the consciousness that hasn't been there, and that's where I truly feel excited because we're moving into that higher frequency that we can. You know, be able to to share with each other, with all humanity. Sharing is caring, and knowing is half the battle. Yeah. Knowing In what to share, when to share, how to share. That some people have boundaries that they won't share until a level of trust is meted in them, and that's some of the things that our cultures will have to go through to survive the, the change. There's a saying that I like, um, which is, forgiveness is a decision and trust is a construction. And I believe that as we are building trust now to bridging to this deeper sense of truth and power of spirit within us, and knowing it is the truth of who we are, that we must be um, diligent and compassionate. Um, because we haven't known what to do with our feelings when we betrayed ourselves and didn't trust our spirit. And now we are becoming aware that it's there, and so we must build every day. Uh, if we're not with a ceremony of a sweat lodge or a ceremony of a, a shamanic dance or music, then we must find our way um, to have a ritual, a ceremony, um, a practice that allows us to keep reconnecting to build that trust because it is there for us, all that we long to know. It's just that we must now make our way to it. No one can give it to us. We have to do it ourselves. Absolutely. We have to make everybody, it sacred. Yeah, everybody has to, to, to be aware that he has to take full responsibility uh, uh, for himself. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's the thing. Uh, as you say, everything is there, and people just uh, just need to reach out. And 
uh, the flame keepers and the wisdom keepers and the shamans um, all over the world they are they are they are opening in a, in a tremendous amount now um, their knowledge um, sharing their knowledge obviously they because they know it's the right time now that the people understand I I talk to to shamans who travel to Europe they say we, we are traveling to Europe for 30 40 years but we have talked to the people they were looking at you like 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 you were explaining them how to build a spaceship hmm. open eyes open mouth didn't understand what they were saying and asking the same shamans about their experience in the last year or the last two years, they say it's just amazing. It's a total shift. You know, you talk to people and they want to want to understand every sentence. So the people who are willing to listen and gather in this, uh, gather gather with the shamans, uh, they are they are already there. They they just need that little. But it is very important that everybody of us reaches out and uh, and. Uh, and try to to, to 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 spread the message and hook up the me hook up as as much people as possible in whatever way as I said before in ceremony and and uh, and uh, there are so many people who, who who don't need ceremony anymore because they already are, either they were born with it um, in, in, they were all, Billy was talking about shifting from the third fourth the fifth dimension there were there are people who were born in the fifth dimension there are people born in the fourth dimension. They don't need to do that way, probably. Uh, and but but others they need, and and uh, and uh, all the natural environment is helping us extremely at the moment um, to, uh, to 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 get that uh, to get that out. Extremely, everything is really lining up. Amazing. For for a human being. In this world now, to to go to ceremony, it's to find something that is sacred. It's where the shaman holds a sacred space in which they can create sacred space in themselves. A lot, a lot of what I talk about is creating sacred space through your own heart, so that your pericardium can express to your energy field what sacredness is. Each human being makes their own belief sacred, and so much of our culture holds nothing sacred. The land isn't sacred anymore. The trees can be torn down at will. Our waters can be poisoned at will. We, the individuals, come back to defining sacred and then begin to tell the leaders, this is our common moral code and this is sacred. And when you violate this, you will be removed from office and punished according to remedy and resolve, not a justice or judgment, so that it can a resolution to the way of life can be found so all beings can have their experience share their experience and not be overwhelmed by the experience of others who may be trying to enforce a rhetoric or propaganda it's true yeah, but you see that that's what happened now uh, up to now um, uh, in, in a way uh, the people who were following a uh, I don't really like the word but spiritual life in the last 50 years it was always you had like the idea of um, you had the idea of a guru and 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 you had to you had to uh, attend a, a very long time the teachings to to um, to um, to get into a certain stage of of, of of wisdom or knowledge and and it it is it is it is uh, clear that we need the the, the knowledge and the wisdom. Of our elders and of our ancestors, but we are shifting now in this cycle that the people really get naturally aware that everything lays in them. That was not uh, well. I feel that was not that was not that common uh, uh, known uh, uh, before in, in the last cycle. It was not. I mean, you know, we know, we know, we know the saying "God is in you," in you but it, it it is really more reduced to a saying than people would really understand what that means, and uh, and and now people really get to know it's not the religion, it's not the guru, it's not the um, whatever I need to follow to find my harmony and my peace. Um, I I I I use the tools, but I 
I, I stay with me and I stay focused. I, I, I do things with, 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 my, with my consciousness on, on a conscious thought. I manifest my things and, and then they line automatically up to that, to that uh, unity frequency. And, and, and there we go. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's what the concept of, of what, we are, what we are trying to bring out to the world is that moving with one mind, that one mind understands with, with, with the consciousness, with, with uh, the super white light. That's that's what the one mind is, and 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 bring bring as much people there as possible to to move to move with that one mind, and and uh, yeah, we all we all we all we all know we all agree uh, upon the fact that times were never were never better than now. You know, it's like the sun um, and the rays of the sun were all individualized expressions of the one inextricably bound to it. You can't take the ray out of the sun. Mm. Um, and yet it gives the light for all mm. of its unique expression. And I think part of the reason people have been so confused is because they can't always live up to these concepts and teachings of how they're supposed to be in order to feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. But when, exactly. <clears throat> excuse me, when they wind up having um, the birthing of the awakening of divine feminine or divine self within them and they go, wow, even though I have been corrupt in my behavior or ignorance or in my actions, there is something magnificent in me and in that I now um, learn how to express. It's a different path. Uh, Billy, may I uh, um, ask you, um, can you tell us, uh, would you like to share something uh, specifically uh, from your people, something uh, uh, specifically uh, about uh, Waitaha, about, uh, about Lemuria, about uh, Atlantis, um, um, I think uh, myself, I'm, 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 I'm keen on hearing on hearing it from you, and 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 for sure there are many listeners out there who, uh, who like to. You were already uh, sharing with us the the Maori uh, um, creation story, so. Um, Lemuria and uh, Atlantis uh, would 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 just fit in perfectly in that uh, in that third in that third basket. Mm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the Waitaha people uh, trace their history back in New Zealand here back two thousand years. And Waitaha was a was actually a chief, and one of the, one of the one of his um, uh, when he married he had a family and they grew and grew and grew you know, but he was actually a chief. Waitaha himself was a chief, and about if you count the generations back to the waka that he came on, that, the, that their ancestors came on, their family came on, it goes back 10 generations, 11 generations, to the waka. And in Māori and in Waitaha, we all acknowledge the waka because the waka was the main vehicle that brought the people from the South Pacific together. So our waka's names for the Waitaha nation is called Uruwal. Uruwal. Now, Uruwal was captained by our ancestor whose name was Rakai, Rakai Hotu. Now, <clears throat> that was a very sacred waka, the, uh, the Uruwal. It was called um, a very sacred uh, waka because 
it carried the walker of peace. And the elders talk about the time, that, that journey that, that the walker made over periods of time from before it landed in New Zealand back to Easter Island or Rapa Nui and from Easter Island they can they they trace its evolution if you like through the islands Tahiti Hawaii because Lemuria is a huge chunk of land that covered two thirds of the Pacific Ocean. You know, that's 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 a huge landmass. You can put maybe six of Australia onto that one land. It was huge. And <coughs> it it's its history goes back many, many hundreds of thousands of years of, of the Murian history. And they talk about Lemuria as being a major land for the evolution of man. And there was, on our Waka, Uruwa, there was the, the black man, the white man, the brown man and the yellow man on that walker that came. So in their evolution they they it took them a long time to evolve from coming through the different islands. When Lemuria sunk, that was a major, major um, catastrophe. Because as our as our as our history talks about Lemuria, it was it was like the cradle of mankind. You know, it was where mankind learnt how to be, because you know the the human body, the evolution of the human body has taken millions of years to get to one point. You know, from 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 the caveman just to today, you know, the the evolution from there to there is, is huge and it's taken millions of years. So Lemuria was a a culture, a people that honored the unseen great spirit. And from what I can gather from the elders that there was millions of people on Lemuria. Millions of people, heaps, and all the different root races were represented there. And they honored the unseen God of everything. But there was another part of their people that wanted to establish their own, um, their own way of life, if you like. So after many thousands of years, a part of these people broke away, and they went into the northern hemisphere and set up Atlantis, and they were the original. Um, they came from Lemur and they broke away and they went there because they didn't think that, you know, worshipping um, an unseen god was, you know, the way to go. The way to go. To go. They wanted to worship something else, so they worshipped technology. Technology was the uh, was their god, if you like, and. Um, The head of the of the of that particular people, the Atlantean people, when they first set up, was a guy by the name of Atlas. 
Atlas. And uh, when he married, he, he had 10 sons. And each of those sons, he, he gave portions of Atlantis for them to govern and, and be their own kings. But he was the he was the main king, and they had, you know, to honor him as the main one. Well, in their evolution, they learned things like laser technology and light technology was very very advanced. Uh, they could play with light, and you know things like. If you lower the frequency of light, it, it comes down and comes down, and then it transforms into matter. That's how light works. And they played with all sorts of different experiments of, of playing with light. And, and they also had help from the star people. So throughout Lemurian history and Atlantean history, there's always been that connection with the star people. And even in Māori philosophy and and history and mythology, there's always been that link with the star people. And this is very important because a lot of the uh, the, the 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 history in, in Waitaha Māori refer to the star people and refers to the different planets. And um, in Atlantis, in their development of technology, they were helped along with the help of the uh, star people in their, techno in their technology. And they developed develop ways of allowing their, uh, developing a, a machine that could fly based on their light, on the light technology. Um, they, could, they, could, uh, they could play with um, Genetics and genetic engineering was was very advanced with the Atlantean people, and all sorts of see that that's where the original gardens actually originated, the, the various gardens, you know, like the Garden of Garden of Eden, if you like. It was amazing what they managed to um, develop with all their technology and that, and I've got. Um, I've got stuff at my my place. I channeled um, paintings, if you like, of of the various villages and town, uh, cities and and hills and stuff of Atlantis and of Lemuria. And um, they lived quite well. They lived quite in luxury, actually. The the Atlanteans. They they loved luxury. And they wanted a race of people who were subservient that could do all their menial tasks, the servants, for them. So they played with the DNA. And in the DNA, there's 12 strands called the helix strands. And so they disconnected 10 of them and left two. And from those strands, they developed this hybrid. This hybrid, and the first hybrids that came through, they called Adam and Eve, and it was off that fucker papa or off that genealogy that mankind has come from, and we've got to the stage now where we're reactivating a lot of the DNA and a lot of the memories that are lodged into our cellular and our genetic memories. And that's part of that calling forth, the bringing forth of all those channels to open up, to let more of our selves through, you know. And, and you hit on it upon it when you said it's your intention you intend what you intend you call forth you know from that source within you you intend that 
and that's so powerful. And so that's what happened. You know, they developed a, a, a race of servants, you know, uh, that didn't think to ask too many questions. <laughs> why am I doing this? Why am I, why am I in this, you know, treadwheel of labour constantly? You know, and, and it still goes on today. You know, you have a look at you know, some of the communist countries, you know, the, the people are still locked into labour, you know, day and night, day and night, day and night. Still, and they don't ask questions. Yeah, you know? not just in communist countries. And and that, and their governments, you know, they they you know they they keep supporting that. So the Atlanteans had a problem with the Lemurian way of life. In the end, that they resented the Lemuria style and so with technology they help to bring Lemuria and destroy Lemuria they uh, they help to do that through their technology and by doing that it set the stage for their own destruction and um, Lemuria went down because the all the gases underneath the under the land got ignited. You know the um, the gases underneath and they not exploded. And not only that, the um, they they had some technology that could allow the moon to 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 really put pressure on that particular landmass. And so Lemuria went down. And uh, Atlantis went down, but there's a lot of people that got off. You know, there's a lot of people that didn't go down with it. Uh, some of those people, um, you know, are, 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 are the descendants on the planet today. You know, we're 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 some of the descendants. You are, you know, descendants of Atlantis and of Lemuria. We all trace our genealogy back eventually. And then from there, we trace our genealogy back to the stars, because it was the star systems that gave of their DNA to make humanity possible on this planet. So, uh, did the Atlanteans have time travel concepts too? You just cut it out for a minute. Did the Atlanteans use time travel also? You said they had all these different kinds of technologies. Um, well, time is a funny thing, isn't it? It's a social you agreement, know, you, isn't it? <laughs> when, you, when you start to get <laughs> exactly. the whole concept of time, man, you know, it's like it's a it's like a huge, a huge story time. Right. So, can I hear your thoughts but, on time? I think it applies directly to the Atlantean Lemurian concept because we as a race with amnesia don't really perceive how long ago Atlantis and Lemuria existed and for how long they existed before they called themselves Atlantis and Lemuria. Yeah. Well, the time frame that I have for Lemuria is half a million years. How did you get to that time frame? Um, through the through through the what we call our fucker papa or genealogy. Okay, through your, through the genealogy, there are other peoples that count the certain number of knots that were left over for their father yes. from the past. Each one, there was a way that you were able to count back. Like some of the elders yes. in Will Pina Pound, they say they can trace their generations back fifty thousand generations, so on and yes. so forth. Some are still still connected that far back into history. In 50 That's right. generations would probably be about 14 million years ago. 15 million. And years. then when you when you keep going back and back, well, then you've got to go from there to the stars. 
to the edge of the stars, right? <laughs> which is which is what I do, which is part of my, my the concept of galactic historian is to go back to the foundation of the stars and how life came here through and through pro, pro, natural levels of progression of sentience and light photonic bodies it went through until it could get into a DNA skin suit of a of a mammal and then evolve it into a consciousness because we were all sharing a reality experience on this planet that was highly beneficial and the Atlanteans and Lemurians spawned through that um, and through that spawning they created technologies of living in the land with one with the land or vice versa in the technology zone the Lemurians would be more spiritual technology versus scientific technology in the Atlanteans that's right that's right, and and not only that, um, Lemurian was was testing the uh, the human body as well, Correct. because the human Genetic. bodies were evolving. Yeah. See, in and, my uh, in my perspective, the Lemurians started here 54 million years ago, and that's because of the social agreement of time, that they went backwards when they when they went backwards in time and recreated time. Well, I'm not an expert on that, so. Um, I, I'm, Again, I'm that's, open my, to that's the, my that's my that's my <laughs> perspective, and I just wanted to, to see what your feelings on time were. Yes, well, uh, my understanding of time is is the same understanding that we create. We create it around us in a bubble. Yeah, we just happen um, to agree right now that time is. You've got Australian time zone, America time zone, German time zone. Right now, our time isn't time anymore. We don't count time the way our ancestors count time. No, no, and and it's funny because we've got different versions of time as well. We've exactly. Got, you know the Gregorian calendar's version, and then we've got the Mayan calendar's version of time, and 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 and, and then you've got Einstein's version of time. And then you have your version of ancestral gen genealogy, which is a whole different version of time. <laughs> so what we do know is time is a social agreement. And when there are yeah. beings of light who understand the social consciousness agreement of time, they can travel within that frequency of time and manifest at other moments in what could be perceived as time and enter the social consciousness of that network of slice. Our ancestors do this with the powers of ceremony when they look forward to the future to communicate to other future ancestors. So it's it's a it's it's quite a deep subject, you know, time and and, and everything. So, um, does that satisfy you? That talk on the Murray and Atlantis at the at this point in time, Bear? Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Absolutely great. <clears throat> so so Billy, I understand you're a musician also. That's what I do for, uh, if you say, a living, and I I, I I I tour and play as well, and that's part of part of the reason why um, I'm coming to Europe and um, and uh, next year I'll be I'm planning to be there, uh, July, August, September in Europe, and I, I want to play, but I also want to be able to do some more of the uh, the peace gatherings that I do here. Where I play, and and then I play for about 45 minutes of music, of original music, and then we have a break, and then I come back, and then we talk on just much the same we we're doing now, and uh, and that program stretches over to about maybe two or three hours of of this, and part of the reason why I'm coming is to share that, you know, to share that whole uh, whole thing with the European people. Uh, like I did, I've been, I've done two tours now of Europe, and um, and I just love the European people. I reckon they're so open, you know. Um, they're, they're very open to to this sort of talk. Um, I'm not sure why, but uh, they are because they, and, have the, um, they have very little sacred in their place. Same here in America. Not even the churches are remain sacred. People go there out of tradition now. And yes, there are faithful people that still go there, but our church, our, our society doesn't allow sacredness. So when they can attend a ceremony where a, a somebody is holding a sacred space and they can palpably feel it in their heart, that amnesiac person begins to go, wow, I know this feeling. 
Yes. And they want it more and more. They want the real deal. Right. They don't yeah, want it on TV. Know. And Europe you, is, is is one of the rare places. Not uh, Europe is one of the places, or, or the only place uh, on Earth, which comes to my mind, besides Scandinavia, where uh, indigenous knowledge was really wiped out uh, systematically for two years, uh, uh, two thousand years. I mean, it, the same happened in the United States, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, the same happened in New Zealand. The same happened in Australia, but uh, fortunately. Um, uh, the wisdom and the tribes, uh, uh, and the wisdom with the tribes, uh, um, uh, survived there uh, in one way better, in one way uh, uh, not not that good. But in Europe, there is nothing at all. I mean, in Europe, uh, you have uh, remainings. You have some some beautiful, uh, as far as I know, even the biggest sites of um, petroglyphs and, and, and paintings in the world, but. That's pretty much it. There is not really any knowledge and wisdom known about uh, um, about um, um, ceremonies and and rituals uh, of the original Europeans. Um, as I said, with the exclusion of Scandinavia, where they have uh, the Sami people, the indigenous people of the Sami people, um, but pretty much in Central and South Europe, there the Roman influence. So strong that they really systematically um, even even uh, brought down cave paintings and stuff like this, you know, just on purpose that the people would not uh, have access there anymore. And that's what 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 Andrew said. If you gather people and and uh, they they immediately feel connected. And what the tendency in Europe when, for example, shamans coming over from the United States and medicine men and and doing some drumming. The drum is something really for Europeans. If if you if you take a drum in your hand, and you and you start to talk about the bear story in Europe, I mean people just getting nuts. They just feel home. They just feel at home because because uh, um, uh, the drum is the beat of, of of Mother Earth, and they immediately connect. And there was not there was no drumming at all uh, in Europe in the last two thousand years. Um, I know it from. From people in in in, in uh, from the from the shamans of the Sami people in the north of Scandinavia, um, they 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 had it was forbidden in Sweden and Norway and, and Finland uh, uh, in the last uh, 150 or 50 years that they would that they would use drums uh, forbidden by the church. It was not seen well, so nobody dared to do it, and uh, and uh, so you immediately get the people and. Uh, and and, 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 and and Europe has a very, very strong bear energy. The bear was the main totem for Europe and all these big cave bears and and when you and once you you, get, you you start to talk about bear medicine with the people or you you open them the bear medicine, the access to bear medicine, it's amazing how the people are connecting to it. it it's it's wonderful. And that's why people are so open, Billy. When you come over to Europe, that's why they wanna hear you. Because because they totally resonate with it. Uh, in a sense, they say uh, there is somebody traveling from so so many thousand uh, kilometers, but nevertheless, he's telling us something which we feel that uh, which feels like it would be from here. And, also, uh, his also his signature frequency of of being an elder talks to their soul, because there have been so many absolutely. other times that they they have been that elder. Or we're looking to be the next elder, and that's exactly. something that can reach beyond their race memory, that that forgotten memory. Uh, elder, elder, being an elder um, is something which is not really part in uh, the European um, uh, um, culture anymore. You have, of course, you have the classical grandfather, uh, you have, which is a honored person in a family. Uh, um, uh, so on, but um, the truth is that these grandfathers don't share any wisdom. Right, uh, they were uh, hijacked. The, the, the few hundred years, they they, they don't have, they, they cannot share wisdom because they don't they don't they don't carry it. Right. Um, and and uh, and um, and so what you say, Andrew, is if there is an elder coming from another continent, this is just like wow! Finally, we have an elder. We have an elder, and 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 to they're share wisdom with us. That, that's, that's what Europeans are really longing for. Yeah. 
That's what and their, intu- for. Right. their intuition turns on before the elder even gets there. Yeah. And that's how they get that initial taste was yeah. my ancestor an elder. And when that elder's yeah. in front of you, it is confirmation that not only do you have ancestors, but ancestors who were elders, and that this elder sitting in front of you is speaking the wisdom of the ancestors exactly. because he is a flame keeper, he is a historian, and above all else, he's connected to this world. Mm-hmm. But we have a we have a we have a, new, we have a new situation that we have elders and they are eight years old, and mm-hmm. and and eight and, year old and, exactly. And and the mind has to has to really go along with that, uh, uh, because if an eight eight year old child is, is 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 standing in front of you, and 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 telling you about uh, crystal grids in a in a in a way you 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 you've never read it and heard it and seen it before, and that's only one little example. Um, it's really amazing. So so the beautiful thing is that that wisdom transfer, um, which an elder had to build up uh, is now coming directly into you know that they they're really born with it. Uh, there are so 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 many beautiful beautiful children who carry already the wisdom, and that's something which is uh, which is more an attraction than than what you said that 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 the people resonate with with the idea of an elder. You know because if an eight year an eight year old child is standing in front of you. Um, explaining it, explaining you the world, um, and and so fluently and so perfect, uh, um, it's it's something really really attractive. Yeah. While the elder carries not just that with him, he carries also um, the aura, the aura of an elder with him. That's uh, that's the really beautiful. Uh, Speaking of the aura of the elder, my first experience with uh, um, a Native American expression, I was working with the um, the Weechel Indians, and I'd gone to do my first sweat lodge, and I met the, the teacher, Brant Secunda, and before we went in the lodge, I had an experience where I saw this old man, this old man walking around, and it actually was his original teacher that had died some years before, and that was my first experience with the elder. And then as I began working with the the Ojibwe, when I would meet the elders, George or two dollars, their totems would come long before that they would arrive in the territory. We were setting up new powwow grounds, and to see the ancestors literally begin to hold space in a brand new powwow ground was my experience to exposure to the non-physical and physical elders who were manifesting here in this world and mm. to see that process come together at an early age in my life really showed mm. me what the network of elders when they were taken apart why the society needed to take it apart so our ultimate awakening would come from a full level of unawareness mm. Mm. or so maybe an awareness can... of what lives within us that, until we had the contrast, yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Billy. Any, you have any thoughts on on elders? In 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 uh, in New Zealand, we have um, what we call marae. A marae is like a a little village, and each of the areas is scattered right throughout the country. And these little villages uh, are. are where the community assembles on special occasions. And uh, at these occasions, um, only, the, only the elders, only the special elders, they call them komatuas, are allowed to speak on these particular, at these particular events. And if you have what they call komatua status, you can speak on any of the marais right throughout the country and be welcomed, and mm. uh, and I guess that's that's when you become accepted by the by the by the people and by the elders is when you when you're able to do that, and um, <clears throat> it's funny that uh, a lot of the ancient uh, stuff has gone out of like we used to have. Māori used to have uh, schools of learning, what they call the wānangas, and then the government passed a, a, a law in, in the late 80s to ban those sort of schools, and those were sort of like schools of esoteric knowledge and all the different knowledges that um, 
that uh, that were available, and the villagers had two schools, two thoughts of schools: the school of light and the school of darkness. <laughs> and whatever you wanted to learn, you went to that school. So mm -hmm. if you wanted to learn about the darkness, you went to that school. If you wanted to learn the light, you went to that school. But they warned you, if you want to learn the darkness, there's a cost. And the cost is that you might have to leave a part of yourself behind. Whereas the school of light was, 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 was different. And so you learned. And, they had to, and these schools were banned. And when the government brought in their um, and their laws and stuff, you know. Do you, do you do any any work in the sovereignty movement with the Maori people? Yes, I did. I I still am. It was it was the sovereignty people that nominated me as their uh, peace ambassador and as their UN ambassador, and I also uh, sat on their uh, indigenous parliament. I was a parliament member. Are you, are you still working with them now? Do any projects that you're working on? Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm working with them now, but the 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 parliament is in recess. Mm -hmm. Our Maori parliament is recess because the government here has problem uh, acknowledging uh, the uh, sovereign aspect of our people, right. even I'm though we have. Quite, cool. I'm quite familiar yeah, with the Maori sovereignty. I've interviewed quite a number of them. Yeah, we have our um, we have our Declaration of Independence, and we have our uh, our colonial treaty, if you like. Mm -hmm. And um, but the sovereign aspect, our our sovereign um, group, if you like, uh, was made up of um, of the Artikis. Now Artikis. Uh, what are they called? The paramount chiefs. And the genealogy of these paramount chiefs comes not just New Zealand, it encompassed all the Pacific areas. Mm -hmm. So the whakapapa or the genealogy runs through the different islands back, back, back to Lemuria. Have you have you related this to Greg Paul at the at the uh, New Earth Nation? Because the New Earth Nation is putting an ultra national trust together with many of the native peoples around the world, as well as working the different sovereignty movements, where they can be unified under a, a single a single banner of, of, of non colonialism anymore. Um, they've been working throughout Costa Rica. If people aren't familiar with that, it would be uh, quite an interesting thing for them to check out the Law and Sovereignty Academy. No, I have no known of them. Well, 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 well. The great thing about New Earth Nation is we're always sharing, and we're always, always getting people together that don't would normally meet. And it's again, it's like, like, like uh, Cosmos has said. There's a special energy going between all of us here, and what we're sharing now at the highest levels of wisdom here is, well, what people are going to be seeing. How are we change our world by people sitting and making conversations like this that can go out to the world to help people begin to process and understand. And at times. You need to laugh at the dense energies. Just laugh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, I'm I'm so excited about the, the coming age that we're shifting into. You know, the coming this this whole movement, the increase of the light, the increase of the consciousness, it actually puts us into an understanding that we're saying goodbye to the old ways. You know, goodbye to the financial system. Goodbye to the greedy governments. Goodbye to the to greed, because none of that stuff is acceptable in the new age that's coming. You know, we won't accept that. Our people won't accept that. You won't accept that. You know, there has to be unity. There has to be peace. There has to be love amongst us. You know, that's the main key. You know, without that, you no know, more. We we haven't got anything. You know, we're back to the same old, same old. That's why your voice is important. That's why all of your voices are so important. And that's why the drums are important and the guitar is important. Because what people can't 
except perhaps in words because they are by their nature polarized they will surrender when they hear the beat of the drum they will surrender when they hear your exquisite guitar the music will take them and the rhythms will take them and then what is behind the words the frequency behind the words will enter their heart and they will wake up well I'm really really looking forward to coming I'm, I'm really just ready to go out on the road soon and I'll be out on the road uh, preparing for my summer program in New Zealand and then I've got some stuff I'm preparing for in Australia and then Europe so if any people anybody want to help to support the movement get in touch with Bear. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, exactly. Thank you very much for the publicity, Billy. Uh, what we definitely, uh, 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 I, could, I, could, I can already do a little pre-announcement here. It will, all be, it will be next year, but uh, uh, we will definitely, uh, through the New Earth Nation Earth Academy, will set up uh, throughout Europe uh, um, a little uh, concert and peace talks for, for Billy in, in, in different countries in Europe for sure. Uh, uh, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do a, a program uh, so that people have access to meet Billy directly on, um, on, a, beautiful, uh, on a beautiful place and, and, and hear him talking personally. Well, Bear, you want to give out your email address? We've got about, about five minutes left in the show here. Okay. So why don't we everyone give out their contact info and anything last we want. We can go over if we'd like to. It's no big deal. You know? uh, yeah, so everybody who wants to uh, contact the Earth Academy, we have uh, Wisdom Keepers. We will be back with, uh, with more uh, Wisdom Keepers and Shamans uh, on the New Earth Radio. And we'll have uh, little videos uh, um, on the website. It is um, um, www.newearthnation.org. You go to um, the um, institutes and there to the academies, Academy, Earth Academy and Wisdom Keeping. Um, and uh, you can reach me on my email that's bear at humanidad. Dot org. So bear at humanitat.org. Cosmos, you want to give out your contact information? Um, yes, you can reach me, Linda, L I N D A, McCallum, M C C A L L U M, 333 at gmail.com. Billy, do you have an email address too at all? Yes. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's all lowercase, Billy. TK, one word, B I L L Y T and a K. Senior, S E N I O R, at yahoo.co.nz. Now, um, I'm in the base here. I've just, we've just started setting up uh, the One World Peace Foundation here. And so we're just starting to um, get the, the sort of structure in place for that. So that's exciting as well. And I'll, uh, and you've got I'll, it, I'll have a, you've got huh? something upcoming there in New Zealand. You want to tell people about that, or New Zealand or Australia? Yeah, well, I've got a, a summer program coming into New Zealand, um, North and South Island, and I'll be on that road for five months mm. doing that program, traveling to all the different towns and cities in New Zealand, and then speaking on the same way to, on peace, um, uh, playing music. Uh, of course, here in New Zealand, I have a, a a network of musicians that I've been playing with for you know 30, 30 years here, and we have uh, we have uh, all sorts of musicians that join in when I when I travel in New Zealand. But the last couple of times I've been to Europe, I've I've just come by myself. Um, I don't know. It just depends on how things pan out if, if other things can happen. Okay, and if people like but to get a hold, but how wonderful to meet you people on the cyber world. 
it, wonderful to meet you too. I'd like to thank New Earth Nation. If you guys would like to volunteer at New Earth Nation, go to newearthnation.org, sign up, do the Declaration of Sovereignty process. New Earth Nation is a volunteer organization and is always looking for people that are are wanting to help. You can get a hold of the the consciousness and spirituality, the wisdom of keeping academy, law and sovereignty, ecology, permaculture. New Earth Nation is here to make the new earth manifest and it requires people sharing concepts thoughts and ideas with a common moral code of unity and in that expression of unity we come to the table and break bread learn from the different elders that are coming forward the different teachers that are coming forward how once again to take life sacred and to allow your sacred space to not be impressed upon by the others who have no sacred space in themselves. New Earth Nation is a concert, consecrated sacred place for people to come to to begin sharing. So if you're into this concept, stop on by newearthnation.org and fill out that sovereignty declaration and, and give us a volunteer. You never know what you're going to expect. I'd like to thank Santi, who's been producing over here, and everyone in the background that's been making sure that this show has gone forward. It has been absolutely spectacular. And Billy, Bear, Linda, I enjoy. I look forward to having you all back on again. And if you guys would like to do a regular show, I think we could really make something that could be perfect. Yeah. Thanks a lot, everyone. We Fabulous. shall pick again. Thanks I don't so know. much. Thank you so time. much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Goodbye. 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 Until next time. Bye. Goodbye. Uh -huh. All right. Well, keep in touch, and uh, even if it's over on uh, on Facebook or however, you know, it's always good to hear from you.